All right, welcome to Battletech Oath of Endless Steel Season 3, Episode 3, 30, 38, Part 3. We begin in black and white with uh, a man kneeling down, and we hear a voice saying, So there I was, perched between a cardboard box and a plastic recycling bin. I could see them at the head of the alleyway. Civilian Guidance Corps, the Candy Stripers, Draconis Combine Beat Cops. Just like any boys in blue in the Inner Sphere, they had a standard armament. But in the Draconis Combine, it was a little different. Stun batons and riot automatic shotguns. Yes, if they came down this alleyway, I was in the deep one. I clutched my thirty-eight Special to my chest. I didn't want to have to kill them, but I couldn't allow myself to be taken in alive. Somewhere, deeper down the line, I could hear a cat meowing. Both of the candy stripers turned. I made a break for it, dashing down, away, under. A different alleyway. I found the man I was looking for. Tattoos from the arm all the way down to his fingers. Missing the last two. Yes, this man was covered in Irizumi. He couldn't be anything but the Yakuza. I cold cocked him. He looked surprised as he fell to the ground and then fell unconscious. If I was going to find what I needed on Captain Kentucky, I would need to get in deep with the Yakuza. And this man was the first step. <laughs> <clears throat> Meanwhile, we cut to, uh, uh, I don't know what to describe you as. Dear leader, Lachlan McDougal? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Wanna be Duke? <laughs> The wannabe Duke. The wannabe Duke. Uh, <laughs> you you have two meetings that need to be executed before you can leave, assuming, you know, there wasn't more to do. But you had indicated that you wanted to meet with uh, Philip Davies, a.k.a. Badger. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you still need that. to decide what to do about your local political party situation before you leave. And I realized that if I'm going to try to take Philip Davies, I probably should talk to Tamari, right? Yeah, that Jeez. would be pretty wise. I mean, so there's, deep... there's no way that he would agree without seeking her permission first, though. You don't, like, you know, he's not going to agree to go with you if Tamari says no, essentially. So it's okay for me to, t like, talk to her yeah, and talk be like, to him, go, yes. go get go well, get. He doesn't Tamari's need mom's permission. permission before he talks to you, but he does need mom's permission before he comes over for dinner. Yeah, fair enough. All right, well, I guess let's talk to Philip Davies first, and then right. we'll do political political shenanigans. He arrives at your office in a Armed Forces of the Federated Sons uniform with cavalry spurs and a dress saber, none of which is, is uh, code in the AFFC, the Armed Forces of the Federated Commonwealth. Uh, it, you know... The, it, the nobility is not required to wear uniform, and he isn't technically a member of the Armed Forces of the Federated Sons, right? He's a noble, again. Still, this is very much, he's making a statement in doing this. It's just not clear what the statement is yet. Um, when he arrives in your office, he comes to something like attention and gives you a brief bow as he says uh, Cut McDougal Sir Davies <clears throat> I see piloting mechs wasn't the only thing you learned from my late friend Jasper the uniform looks nice please have a seat okay he executes a Perfect march forward, sidestep, sit down, sit with, you know, hands on the arms. Some real stolen valor with this guy. <laughs> stolen <laughs> valor? He's a fucking war hero. He may not be a regular member of the Lion military, but he yeah, literally yeah. fought in a war. What do you that want from true. him? He did literally fight in a war. That is fair. 
Jesus, uh, stolen <laughs> valor. It's he's not like he's got a fucking tattoo. He doesn't have a Navy SEAL tattoo and going down to the local uh, VFW talking about his days, right? <laughs> stolen valor, my ass. <laughs> you were there. <laughs> <laughs> you were there. Uh, yeah, he was so, the luckiest son of a bitch. <laughs> so, uh, I guess Lachlan will say, um, Philip, I know we haven't uh, been able to cooperate as much as we once did over these last few years. But I have something I was hoping you could help me with. He just remains staring at you. Was Philip Davies around when we went on the first trip to get, uh, like, the first thing that Xenia found? He was on the mission where you got LeBeau. But he wasn't on... Cause, oh, right, because we knighted his, his grandfather right after that. So he definitely wasn't around before then. He definitely wasn't around for that. Okay, so uh, Lachlan will say, um, in your time with Jasper, did he ever tell you about... The trip we took before your grandfather was knighted? Yes. Before the war started all those years ago, we had planned something similar, something else that Xenia had found. Planning to go find it now. This will be the last chance I have to do anything like this. And frankly, I owe it to everyone involved to extend you the opportunity to come with us. I don't know what we're going to be able to find out there, but if we find anything, it's likely to be not small. I want you to come. He turns to look outside for a moment, and it's clear that he is having a protagonist flashback. And then he turns back to you and says, I understand that you have knighted my cousin, Marianne. Provisionally. There is no such thing as a provisional knighthood, and she has been very clear that she intends to take my title from me. <clears throat> what do you say? I say that if you come on this trip, that nobody can control your fate but you. If you choose to stay behind here, I'm sure things will be very different in two, in one to two years when I return. Who knows whether they'll be different for the better or for the worse for you. Frankly, Philip, <clears throat> I've always found it a shame how things turned out between the two of us. I think that we could work well together moving forward. I understand the rift between us is not ins uh, insubstantial, but I'm trying to take our first steps towards repairing it. If you're unwilling to do so, that's also fine. We can move on. He holds a blank expression for several long seconds before saying, You are not ordering my service, nor could you. You are requesting it. 
as a result, I have two asks. That is beyond whatever Lady Tamari may require from you. What are those asks? My son Mark comes with us. I understand you are bringing the Duchess. Absolutely. I believe if possible, if it's all right with her mother, I will also plan to bring Celeste, though she's a little young. I think the young nobles of Whittington need to spend time off planet to get perspective. This will be a good opportunity. So I welcome anyone who would want to give their children the same experience. I want your word that the government will cease its attempts to crack down on legal protest while we are gone. Otherwise, I cannot forfeit my position here. I will be directly blunt with you in your position as Chancellor. What you have done is a overreach against the freedoms of the Federated Sons in attempting to fight the enemies of the Federated Sons, you have become the Draconis Combine in method, if not in fact. These programs of going after those who gather in peace in order to express their opinions, I have stood against them since the beginning, and I would have your word that they will continue without stormtroopers cracking down on them while we are gone. I would have you swear it in Jasper's name. I recognize that you believe us to be in opposition when it comes to the right of free protest. The series of laws that I have passed in regards to national security. Let's call them the Patriotic Acts. <laughs> Jesus, Sam. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> anyway, uh, in, in actuality, I think Blackwood will say, he'll, he will say something like, um, uh, the things that I've done to ensure all of our safety while easily painted in the way that you seem to wish to are, I think once you have a chance to understand the position I'm coming from rather measured, I have no inclination to stop legal and peaceful demonstration. I merely want to ensure that they are peaceful, they are safe, and that everyone is able to walk away from them healthy and happy. I can swear to conti- I can swear that I will always stand for that. And I think that you'll find that if you work with me, we can both ensure that we preserve this right to demonstration that we both find so important. You must forgive me. I do not have the same command of language that you do. I will accept your oath, and should I find later that you have betrayed me, I will kill you. In the interest of our continued cooperation, I'll pretend I didn't hear that threat to the head of the Senate. I look forward to traveling and working with you and, frankly, fighting by your side once again, Philip. Okay. He stands up and gives you another curt bow for leaving. 
I mean, that went great for Lachlan. Best case scenario, he can win win Philip over. Worst case scenario, now he has it on tape that he tries. He wants to kill me. So. <laughs> Yeah, but you're nobles, right? Like what he's talking about is a duel. Yeah, but also he's not gonna like he's not gonna bass at you in an alleyway during the middle of a war. You know what I mean? Like, sure, but also like Lockwood has no real worry about beating Philip Davies in a mech duel, whether that's correct or not. Wow, all right, find out. I mean, he's in his prime, and you're uh, you're pushing forty, right? Hubris is the word I Lock- Is it Lachlan in his like early thirties at this point? All right, let me let me check. Let's see. You were you were the eldest of us, I think. You're an old man now. He started at like twenty three. You're thirty six now. <laughs> okay, that's like I'm that's turning thirty six next month, so <laughs> yeah, I gotta tell you, I feel like you're done, though. You're over the hill, the <laughs> tire. <laughs> oh my Get, god! Play Celeste now. Just save yourself. <laughs> I'm still, a, I'm still a two three pilot AP. <clears throat> yeah, well, <laughs> that's certainly true. All right, what is your plan in regards to orders for the political parties? Is there anything you want to do about the uh, four current political parties and or your state intervention into their organization? Uh. I want I want you to know, AP, that I'm trying very hard not to make more charged political jokes. Uh, I really when... deeply appreciate that because <laughs> YouTube will absolutely fuck me over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I, I won't do that. I won't do that. But um, I think Lachlan is probably going to uh, just uh, feed the base. I think I think that strategy has worked well for quite a few uh, political groups over the years. He's just gonna say what he needs to say for his folks to be happy. Um, so you're I basically promoting the vigilance party over the other three. Uh, they're the, the ones who just say traditional that whatever... draconis march values of of you know vigilance against the dragon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, they're also the I like think... pity party, you know. Out of out of all the marches, we're the one that got screwed over in the war. The Federated right. Sons is, is a fair weather friend sort of deal. Uh, is this wait? Actually, is there a party that like Genji likes? Because that seems like very Genji. Uh, I so the thing is, Genji is still a strong Federated Sun supporter, and he has yeah. now shifted that to the Federated Commonwealth. I don't know that he gets involved in politics. Genji has basically disappeared from public life to become, you know, like a mover and shaker guru behind the scenes sort of deal. I mean, he was sure. once the planet's <laughs> premier battle mech pilot, and then yeah. he, you know, then he. Got the shit kicked out of him. Yeah. Went into a coma. Basically, can't pilot a mech anymore at that level. You know, he's he's like an average pilot now, and that's not yeah, great. No. Now he just makes speeches or whatever. Uh, comes he knows, out of his cave but the every thing so is, often. he's always been a guy who knows a lot of people and has gained their loyalty. So yeah. he has shifted into the like. Sure, I used to be a great warrior, but what if I was a great statesman now? He's well, your, he's a he's your statesman, guy who grinds the sausage. Let's put it that way. But if he's a statesman, then doesn't that mean he's involved in politics? No, 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 no. Sausage grinder. Okay. Sausage grinder. You don't ask okay. how the sausage gets made. Yohei Genji makes it, and no one asks. He, mm. he doesn't give speeches, he doesn't get. Overtly involved in politics. If you want to know what Genji supports right now, it's definitely vigilance against another attack coming from the Draconis Combine. Uh, okay, well then, uh, yeah, Lachlan will. I, I basically just wanted to endorse a party that will keep uh, uh, Audrey and Genji and my kind of like like more difficult to please allies 
unruffled while I'm off planet. Supporting the Vigilance Party is not a bad step for that. Okay, then that's what I will do. All right. The other three parties will remember this. Although the reformists, yeah, well. if you didn't support them, the reformists would remember anything that you do. <laughs> Wasn't the aren't the reformists the one that don't like me? Yes, yeah, that's so basically where it. Badger is right now. No, Badger supports the Sanderists. They want to expand the Federated Commonwealth does, and the Federated side. Well, so the Lyran Commonwealth supports unionization, but the Federated Sons does not. Mm. And. <clears throat> The Sanderists want to expand the right of unionization within the Federated Commonwealth, Got which it. has traditionally been seen as a Draconis Combine, communist, socialist, yeah, okay. anti values. I want to be clear, AP. Lachlan is not anti union. He just thinks they're inefficient. <laughs> sure. They're just, they're just economically inefficient. Sure. Oh, man. <laughs> Unfortunately, the law of the land, however, is that not only are unions illegal, but organizing protests around unions is very questionable. Got it. Uh, private businesses, of course, and nobles no. all have the right to intervene. No, nobles yeah. specifically can intervene in, in such a union protest with battle mechs, which is why Badger has basically taken to defending their questionable right to protest. Mm. Also, the Sanders yeah, are the that. ones that have been directly violent. Although, yeah, whether that, well, whether that, you know, like the Sanders would say they were defending themselves in a number of actions, and you know, the amount of violence against them decreased rapidly once the police started noticing a large number of guns in their presence. And the police are thinking we should be rounding up the leaders and whoever's selling them these goddamn guns. Unfortunately, Federated Sons, the right to own firearms is totally allowed. So there's just it's it's difficult, complicated situation with the Sanderists. And just as a reminder, I wrote this like three months ago. So don't come at me <laughs> for this one, YouTube. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Oh god, that's uh, very unfortunate timing, honestly. Wow, yeah. amazing! It's like I could see the future! <laughs> it's like it's right in front of you. Um, oh man. Yeah, I think, uh, 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 yeah, I mean, I, I think that's all I need to do. Lachlan doesn't, basically Lachlan just doesn't want things to get shaken up too badly while he's gone. Which, obviously they will, but like, he's okay. gonna do what he can to like, have that not be the case. Yeah, mitigate it as much as possible. Uh, <clears throat> Sir Tyr Sauron reports to you. Sir Tyr Sauron. I had to work my way through it. Sir Tyr Sauron reports to you that after looking over both jump ships and the Confederate class dropship, that there was no other room for aerospace fighters. And that taking a small fleet out with no combat air patrol was a massive mistake. So in your name, he has acquired two almost 50-year-old CNT-1D Centurions, which are discontinued, but well-loved within the Federated Sons. They're basically like uh, the A-10 Warthog or like a F-15 essentially they just you know like everyone's like wow we could keep this plane around forever wow it just does the job it's not great in anything it just does the job um uh, ap just just uh i do have an updated sheet of uh what lebeau has in yes their lebeau fleet. is bringing a jump ship with no drop ships that is why no. he's not bringing any fighters i that's not what my understanding was i thought we were bringing three drop ships with you want LeBeau's. to bring LeBeau's entire force? No, not not necessarily all of it, but like there's there's definitely a significant portion that makes sense to bring to protect the fleet as we're traveling. And that is what exactly? <clears throat> so for aerospace fighters, there are 18 currently in the fleet. Yes. Um, and my understanding is we have uh, a Union CV, a, a Leopard CV, and then uh, oh God, a Seeker. Um, and if I okay, understood... if you bring all those, there is no longer any space to bring any, like, you, 
You have to make a trade-off here because you can't bring every single one of those dropships and also mm. bring the dropships that are currently tasked towards this mission. There are two well, open jump ship spots. Well, we have two jump ships, right? So one yes. has one of the jump ships has one spot on it because it's a scout class. Mm -hmm. The other is LeBeau's Invader, which has the Confederate attached to it. And oh, he said it was a monolith jump ship. Okay. Uh, it's Invader class. I get more and more confused by all of these spaceship logistics that every time. So I think I just want to not deal with any of it and let Eddie and Tear Sauron. Literally, whatever Sir Tear Sauron says that we should do, Lachlan will do. I just don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah, basically, Kane gave me like a, a big list of of everything that that he understood we had. So yeah, I'm gonna be honest that like. I, I wrote this adventure for my understanding, which was that you, you were not bringing anything but the jump ship. So, oh, like okay. this last minute change here is pretty like we can do it if you want to, but it's going to require a, a rewrite. Yeah. And I'm, I'm pretty no, shocked fine. by its inclusion. No, it's all good. Um, <clears throat> well, if we can have like some minimal support, that's fine uh, with uh, with the fighters like I mean, you're getting, you're getting Lebeau personally piloting a jump ship. That sounds pretty supporting to me. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll figure out. Uh, well, and I guess this again, the more people you bring, the more supplies you have to bring, and the less time you can spend out there. Oh, I know. I, it's... Was it? I thought last week we talked about how. Or last time we played him, we talked about how we do. You didn't want Lebeau to come because you wanted him to be able to do stuff. You already had him do it. Um, well, it's either that or I mean, the other, even right? if Lebeau doesn't come, his jump ship is coming. Yeah. And and the jump ship has its own captain. Lebeau is the admiral okay, I, of the group. I misunderstood then. <clears throat> I just yeah. wanted to have a potential Kane guest spot at some point in the future, just like there's going to be a sound wave <laughs> guest spot. Yeah, I think we can. The well, potential is that we can leave the night behind but, if, that, yeah. if that's necessary. All right, I hear. Also, like, if we want guest spots, that's more important. Let's let's just make yeah. the sh we can change the show and what whatever we're doing to fit the context of the guest spot rather than the other way around. Yeah, we're adults <laughs> here, and we want to play a game with our friends. So like, I don't, yeah. you know, you know what I mean. I'll, I'll be clear. Like, I'll, I'm just gonna step back on the jump ship stuff. Like, whatever we can bring, we just bring. Do I guess I, I don't know. I just don't. Yeah. yeah. I have, and I, let me let and, me put it this way, Eddie. You want to bring more forces to do stuff? Well, I thought we needed the space for for the mechs and for the the nobles that we were bringing. Because my yeah, understanding the mechs is that and we, the nobles will all fit on the con the Confederate, the Louisiana Purchase. All six nobles with all six mechs will completely fill that ship. Okay, but then we don't have any space for anything we find. Correct. The Union Tier Sauron ship is going to be completely empty. Oh, oh, hang on though. Hold on, Eddie, Eddie. This will help you out a lot. Yeah. Okay? You assume that everything we're deploying is coming back. Well, yeah, I, no. <laughs> so don't worry about that. You're, ta you're taking <laughs> no, no. a basically it's gonna empty be a trade. <laughs> There's going to be a cultural exchange in the form of some bullets and some salvage. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. you're taking a basically well, empty drop ship to be loaded with loot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I guess part of it, too, was like, what if we bump into people and stuff like that? That was kind of the reason why I thought I was bringing some level of forces, at least the fighters, to protect the fleet if we're, you know, interdiction or... All right, uh, if you want to bring the Leopard CV loaded up with aerospace fighters, I think that's four aerospace fighters. Well, sure. Uh, it stores six. It stores six. Sure. Um, and the Union stores 12. Uh, do you also <laughs> want to bring the Union? Again, uh, the more the more ships you bring and the more people, the less time. No, I know. Uh, no, it was it was more of like, um, let's bring the just the the union. Okay, that leaves you with an empty dropship collar. Yeah. All right. All right. So Tirsar doesn't buy the Centurions because if twelve aerospace fighters are coming with you, you have a you know, full squadron of fighters, I believe, in BattleTech terminology. Six yeah, wing pairs. I think that'll, that'll sufficiently. That oh, I'm muted. Hey, which mech did you have me bring in? The you imp? said you were bringing the imp. Okay. 
That's fine with me. I just wanted to see. I didn't remember. We we've all seen the well, new Top need... Gun, right? No, I have no, not seen the new Top Gun. Okay. I just I you're the only one the, who's seen the new Top Gun. <laughs> I, I cannot believe I'm playing uh, BioTech with a bunch of people who have not seen the new Top Gun. That's incredible. What? I don't like Do Top Gun. Man lost his fucking mind right. several times. We've watched it happen on television. Yeah, we need to we stop need feeding that man. Br- <laughs> we didn't bring a- need to bring any of my other mechs for other people, did we? I just want to make sure because like we can. I'm the just... only question is whether or not you're bringing your uh, half sister, Morgan. If the answer is I, yes, did... then you'll need a hunchback. If I'm not bringing I my knight, it I might make sense wanted... to do. I thought we wanted to leave Morgan on planet because she's a good ally that will take care of things. whatever you want. I think I want to leave Morgan Very to well. make sure. The and I've got six oh. max, which is Harmony, the three of you, uh, and then two knights, and then Jasper's six mechs and seventh tank on Hi, the Jasper's. Union now. Okay. And then you know it. Uh, he's gonna keep doing he's gonna keep doing it it's okay oh i said jasper didn't i <laughs> look i still miss him okay all right we all do and every yeah. time i look at the overlay it's jasper's name so because <laughs> you haven't changed it yet yeah. i gotta change it. I gotta change I, it i love that i love how we like we don't meet for a month and you're like i gotta change that <laughs> <It's> just, <that's laughs> so does uh does rosamond have a problem with celeste coming on this this voyage because the other kids are too young right uh, so like listen, 10, Mark Mark Davies is coming and he's four. So, oh, all right. Well, maybe how many of the kids? We can just bring wait. all the fucking kids. Wait, 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 wait. Is a jump like in space safe for a baby? It is not safe for like infants, right? But it is safe for like grown kids. Bro, because you you can't even go on like an average roller coaster, but you can jump through space. That's awesome. Okay, so the the, the <laughs> Good baby, for you, kid. the ba- Lachlan's like youngest is probably a little young, because he'd be like five or because he was born like right before the time skip. Uh, but Lachlan would probably try to bring the twins and Celeste as long Angus, as we're Athena. Was okay All right, sure. Her. And and Celeste as long as. Uh, Rosamond's okay with it. Rosamond would love for any private time Harmony and Celeste can continue to spend together. She's really pushing for Celeste to become Harmony's lady in waiting slash battle tech bodyguard sort of deal. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Celeste um, is a nine year old, just to remind you. But uh, yeah. Well, Rosamund she's has nine big and plans. the other two are seven, I think. She's nine, and the other two are seven, I believe. Uh, according according to my calculations, uh, for some reason, I yeah, I have nine, and then Angus and Athena. For some reason, I have them as ten years old, but that can't be right because Celeste is older than them. Yeah, yeah, Celeste is definitely older than them, so I think I might have made a mistake here. Um, it actually would maybe make. How long was our time skip? Seven years. Seven years, yeah. Because uh, Jasper it was, was from born thirty thirty one to thirty thirty eight, so yeah, seven years. Jasper so was think... born just when we did the time skip. Yes, Jasper Khan is seven, yeah. so Angus and Athena have to be slightly older than that. Yeah, I think that might Angus be undersold be... how old Celeste is. Mm. Angus and Athena should be nine, and Celeste should be at least eleven. Then, all right. Sounds... I believe Celeste right. is two years older than Angus and Athena, and they were two when we did the time skip. Look, and I just Angus need... was born someone to rewatch so the whole series the from the beginning <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, as long as rosamond doesn't mind being left all alone maybe lachlan will just bring all four of his children oh yeah, my she god she doesn't she doesn't mind okay then he will bring all four of his children all right oh my god uh and their tutor <laughs> Oh my god because he doesn't want to uh, fucking raise these kids in so, space so Tears if we're bringing his life just got 10,000 times harder yeah, if we're bringing the kids, like <laughs> apparently the seeker is a luxury dropship. Should we bring that, like to to cater to all these kids? It's it's meant to be like they have a state rooms and things like that. So it was it was meant to be kind of perfect for uh, the nobles. But I, I'm just tossing that Do out we there. We have room. We have a dropship collar still in place. It's just okay, more people. Then bring it. 
Oh my God. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so now we're just, it's a family trip. Okay. So I was going to bring Jasper. We're going on a road. We're going on a road trip. <laughs> we're going on a road trip, kids. Uh, I was going to bring Jasper and leave Kendrick behind with uh, Goliath Veneer, my knight, um, so that he can continue to tutor and train and have my eldest still on planet to like maintain the, the house. Okay. Um, nice. uh, and then Philip Lowe would come with us. So that way also Kane could potentially join us. Sorry, you said your old. Who's your oldest? Kendrick. Kendrick, right. Kendrick. Kendrick. Question he's, mark. Heir? That's what I've got here. Yeah, yeah. So he's the eight year old. Still questionable whether or not he is the heir to the official con house. He's definitely the heir oh, to the Whittington yeah. cons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've That's got the a other cons, like, not time to go after the other cons. Something? No. Yeah, we'll see. No, if, if I. Well, I mean. Cons. Hmm? The other kinds don't like you, right? Correct. They, yeah, they they're once Paul disappeared, uh, they started to give me shit. Yeah, because they're his first family, so they're like, yeah. you guys are a real fucking threat. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> he has a whole he has a full, full family with kids. Good, good kid. <laughs> I have some words <laughs> once I find Paul. Just be aware that the Seeker is basically fucking massive. Really? Yes. What does, so that's it's meant bad, to carry right? 40 vehicles. Oh, shit. Oh, we should like not bring that. Then. Three times the size. Well, so the thing is, the ship can be run with only uh, 20 people. Mm hmm. Wow. Yeah, we would want. We would so want if you want to store all correct, the families sure. on the Seeker, you know, there's plenty that's kind of, of, you know, Everyone will have their own wing of rooms, essentially. <laughs> That's Maybe. honestly the most nobility aspect. Yeah, I, I love it. Yeah. I honestly love it. I, I know I, still complain too. That's the best part. I know. <laughs> the kids will be like, Dad, why can't we go to the other ships? <laughs> um, yeah, I have specs for all of them. So I've been learning uh th th thanks for that Kane. that was amazing just the breakdown um yeah i mean i'm i'm down to bring it and and just run it with a minimal crew uh and okay. just have it for the families and that's it and if we need it for like storage or things that we find boom we have something okay it can transport 1600 tons of cargo as well so this is pretty much where the whole fleet supplies are being loaded onto okay 1,600 tons of cargo is a lot of fucking cargo for the yeah. folks at home. Uh, that, that sounds like a, ma <sighs> like a massive amount. All right. So just be aware that like this undertaking is a massive draw of money for you. Oh, Count, Count McDougal. Because what's needed <sighs> to keep such a huge fleet alive for... You know, you've, you've theorycrafted two years now. That's a lot of food, a lot of water, a lot of oxygen. Your uh, your bank books are, well, you're having to take out a couple loans. We'll see how this expedition we're pays hoping out. It, we're hoping it's less than two years, but yeah, you know. sure. But you know, you don't when you're going into a journey into the unknown. You don't take how much you hope you're going to need. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is it's like it's like. An age of sale style, like a, you know, yeah, yeah. You have to Expedition. get a bunch of loans from the bank, and like, if we don't find something out there, it's gonna ruin me. Letter of yeah. credit. Like, yeah. Oh, something. yeah. You will definitely be ruined if you come back empty-handed at the end of this, for sure. Yeah. But we're gonna at um, least come back with one king crab, and that's, that's <laughs> enough for me. Well, and and I mean, if I get a king crab, I'll immediately just sell the imp. <laughs> so that's a lot of fucking money. <laughs> is there anything anyone else wants to do before this fleet launches uh i'm sending you a message ap but other than that nothing it's just a, a, a thing that um anko is making sure is on board Uh, there you go. 
Okay, if you're sure. Mm hmm. All right. Just make sure to keep them hidden. That's all I'm saying. Mm hmm. All right. <clears throat> all right. So, by decision between all, there was there are a lot of dropship captains, a lot of jump ship captains here. Uh, by the collective decision of this group, the dropship captain who has the Count's flag aboard will be the commander of the flotilla. And since the nobles, uh, the noble mech warriors will be aboard the Confederate class Louisiana Purchase, that makes the relatively unknown newcomer, Captain Kentucky, commodore of this fleet, uh, his basic act, first act, is to make Tyr Sauron his executive officer and basically say whatever Tyr does is, you know... Since Tyr is the one who planned all of this, right? It's... It, he is Commodore in name only. <laughs> Tyr is the most important person aboard. Except for that. <laughs> aboard this fleet, yes. <laughs> However... Tyr is only afforded the uh, theoretical rank of commander while all of the other the uh, jump ship captains are awarded the rank of captain. So even though they may all address each other as captain, Tyr is actually the lowest ranking. But this is not a military fleet, again, so they just call him Commander Sauron. <laughs> there is... it. It's pretty clear anytime you hear or see from this group that they are all in a pissing contest with each other over who's the more is the drop ship more important or the jump ship more important chicken or egg the whole voyage will consist of answering this question several times a day uh captain kentucky what side is tear sauron on a uh, tear sauron doesn't pick sides between these two because he you know <laughs> he doesn't just command a dropship he also commands a space station and he would never want to piss off jump ship captains who might want to plug their jump ship into his space station so he is a neutral smart observer man. smart man this is why i hired <laughs> sir tear sauron and made him a knight uh you are invited to the uh first dinner with captain idaho rhode island kentucky on board the uh, Louisiana Purchase to introduce yourselves to him, to for him to introduce themselves to you, to answer any questions upcoming, and as a thank you for the pardon recently issued, allowing his ship to operate within the Federated Commonwealth uh, without seizure. Do any of you attend? Sure. Why not? Like Seems like it. Of course we would. Badger and Marianne also both attend this party. <laughs> and the, the uh, Duchess. So we have all six nobles here present for the party. And it's incredibly awkward. Oh, it's so awkward. Trouble. But <laughs> Captain uh, Idaho kind of breaks the tension very quickly. He's um, He's got a curly hair uh red hair you know one of those tight curly beards um he works out he's a fit guy fit fit man uh late 20s early 30s definitely a little young to be a dropship captain um he floats his way over to each of you and does like a warm handshake and and uh you know, like a personal anecdote. Like he floats over to Yusuf and says, uh, Master Wheat, welcome aboard. Just call me Idaho. All right, Idaho. Give him a nice little nod. I, um, you know, I heard a lot about you and, and your father and your family on the other side of the border. And I want to say I am honored to have you on board. Thanks. Even if these like, people don't recognize who you are, I do. Uh, I'm not giving him any of the time of day or like okay. being thankful for this. I feel like this is just awkward. All right. Like it's <laughs> schmoozing to me. All right. He floats over to Anko and says, uh, Ernest Khan, thank you for coming aboard. Thank you for having me. 
I, uh, I have high hopes that we'll be able to find your husband while we're out there. Your sentiment is appreciated. Some people I... say it's a one in a million shot, but I think it's fate. <laughs> well, <clears throat> we've had a shift of fate, and I'm hoping we can maintain a positive outlook. So thank you for being a source of that. I understand you've brought your family with you aboard the Seeker. I will make our transport bays available for shuttle transit during our long voyage. Also appreciate it. We felt it good to keep the families together, have them grow up a little bit with, them, with each other. He presses a piece of paper in your hand with like a pound sign, you know, like pound 32 and says, this is the direct line for your personal concierge, uh, midshipman Jeffries. Whenever you need to take a shuttle journey, just contact him and he will have it ready before you can get down to the base. Ah, how kind of you. Anything you need, just contact Jeffries. Very well. Thank you, Baroness. And you as well, Captain. McDougal, he comes over to you, and he gives you a two-handed handshake, you know, one hand over the other. <clears throat> oh! I wanted actually. to thank you for the pardon. I am deeply regretful for my family's actions during the last war, and I hope you can see what service the Kentucky family could still be for Whittington. I'm not in the business of holding sons to account for their father's crimes. As long as you can show me that the pardon was earned, I'm sure I'm glad to have given it. Is there anything you need? <clears throat> no, no, nothing. Uh, unless you can have someone top me off here. You like? <laughs> oh, he you know. personally gets a plastic bulb to squeeze you more alcohol. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Uh, he gives you a, a pound zero one and says, this is my personal line. If you need anything on board, contact me directly at any time. Will do. And uh, Captain Kentucky? Yes. Just keep in mind, I always have a place for loyal and competent folks. I hope... We can continue to work together long into the future. Very good, sir. So he uh, floats away, zero gravity, you know, until he bounces along a wall and walks you through the features of this particular dropship. Uh, there aren't many Confederates left, so uh, you are kind of surprised at the level of automation on board. When you are changing clothes, right, when you have dirty clothes, you throw them towards a port in the wall and it vacuum tubes them to the laundry room aboard. Uh, Wait just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Uh, I mean, I, I seen that on the internet just a few weeks ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, that's going to be on the Louisiana Purchase for sure. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, man. There's all sorts of, like, 1970s-style innovations aboard the Confederate. Um, vacuum tubes. Yeah, lots of vacuum tubes <laughs> and, like, just ways for things to be... Basic tasks to be as automated as possible to make the hellish life that someone traveling in the periphery would need to <sighs> suffer through. Um... Your journey begins. I, I kind of imagine, um, <clears throat> and and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Yusuf, or, or uh, if Tamari would would offer this as like the drinks that are most often uh, provided are the um, Whittington's best. Uh, what is it? Um, oh gosh, you mean uh, the heart of the Hurricane Highlands? Yes, yes. What is it called again? Oh my god, <laughs> you don't know what it's called. I, I'm blanking. Well, it's, it's definitely not my... called Periphery Gold. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, it's not called that. That's, I know. That's I know. The, the that competing was the other one. Beer. Um, 
Why? Uh, hey, look, it's never your month. second choice. Never your second choice. Oh, primary beer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I'm in marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Hey, look, I, I just recovered from COVID, man. My yeah. brain is a little. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's good. From our beer. From our beer. Beer. <laughs> beer. It's not your second choice. <laughs> uh, discreetly purchased by one Philip Davies. Uh, you, you may know her as Whittington's finest patissier, Mary Davies. Uh, enjoying her grandchildren and now great grandchildren. She's kind of retired from the patissier business for a few years, but uh, when the time came to do some freeze dried breads and long term goods, a hundred tons of uh, Hurricane wheat was transformed into various, you know, prepared products. So rather like, than whatever you could find, you will regularly enjoy breakfast croissants and uh, donuts, that sort of thing. I, I was thinking like space tack bread, but no, yeah. God, no. <laughs> she has a she has a reputation to uphold. Well, like, but like upscale like tack bread, where it lasts a long How time. How do you upscale tack bread? I don't know. But I'm just more thinking about the survivability of tack bread. Like it's literally at the long. bottom. Yeah. <laughs> You have to dunk it in coffee in order to eat it because it's too hard to consume otherwise. That's how hard pack works. Yeah, yeah, I know. And yeah. being a sailor before the invention of fucking scurvy. Jesus, oh, you know what I mean? Or the, uh, the they just expected you to die. They just they just had a fifty percent death rate. Oh yeah. man, there was a reason that they routinely just grabbed yeah. any man that they could find wandering around drunk in a port and said, "Well, yep. you're serving on this ship now." Yep. Uh, 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 quick, quick shout out, uh, um, uh, the interval, uh, at, uh, the Long Now Foundation has a, uh, a lecture on the seven times that the, the human race has discovered the cause and a cure for scurvy and then lost it subsequently over like thousands of years that we've been, been sailing the seas and stuff. It's pretty cool. It's rose hip tea. Thank you, Korea. <laughs> All right. Three months later, it's really boring. <laughs> it is suffering. So my question is, you've got a whole dropship that has hundreds of passenger rooms that have been devoted to about 10 children. On the other hand, Jasper, your men who are on the Union have basically taken, to, especially the new pilots, your four new pilots have taken to calling you the unseen commander <clears throat> because well, yeah, you are hard, not routinely It's, it's hard to be a seen commander when you're buried six feet deep. God damn oh, it! Oh, <laughs> you got me! Oh, no. You got me there! I didn't get oh, you so oh, yeah. One day I'll be able to have my own retort. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Sam. You said, that was good. I couldn't have done better than that. That's the way, but that was good. That was so good. <laughs> they call you the unseen commander, but your your boy Bassett has been trying to whip the other six into shape into a functioning mercenary unit of the of the level of quality that you're used to, that you're accommodated to. Is right. Bassett? Does that mean? Hold on. Am I putting my hair up Barrett. into a little like man bun? All right. Are you? And uh, you know where this is going, right? I don't know where you're going. You tell me. Uh, Mulan. Wow, what? are you going to oh. go over there? Like a man out of you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> full full, full <laughs> montage <laughs> on the... Uh, are we doing all the ship We're montage? Sorry, yeah. No, like, I thought that was obvious when you put that... Sorry. But anyways, okay, sorry. I don't know why I don't know why that's obvious. And then my brain, though, it's strikingly clear. I don't... I'm, I'm a weirdo. It, anyways, a yeah. It's a, a classic. Montage. Look, yes. here's the thing. It's yeah, Eric, I'm making them work. You're mysterious as the dark side of the moon. There was no way I could have foreseen <laughs> you'd be thinking about Mulan. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not. I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll tell. I'll tell the troops. I'm not. I'm not paying. Like, I'm not paying them to like me. I'm paying them to do the job. You know, uh, like. And then we have like a 
a montage with like an obstacle course and like a punching bag and stuff. And then you we guys just are get on shots solid of like people metallic floating. orbs. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, each other. I want. I want no We make it work, AP. AP. We make it work, AP. You're right. I, I I I let the memes out. I did that. But I would I would like to show that Yusuf is a pretty command like when he commands he's he requires discipline and that's how he earns trust from people like he doesn't he's not there to make friends you know he he's the fucking guy in survivor it's like i'm not I'm here, not to, here make to make friends, friends. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, I always he's that, that kind of guy, guy. but but uh, but the thing about yusuf though is that they come around to like him being like all right no i get that but, we'll you know. see We'll see if they come around and like them. I mean, them. not really like them, but No, yeah. we'll make a leadership role. I want to see if this style of hard, hard line, tough love. Uh, can I pump a bunch of stuff into leadership before I make this role? Of course. I have not done anything. It's okay, been a whole here. three months. Right. Uh, cool. So Just say you didn't become a better leader during this. How much time. XP does it cost to go from two to four? Oof, Jesus, I don't know. Someone get the book open. Do we, do we assume it's eight? Uh, I think it's you have to pay the amount I for the next 1. level. I think it's 1.5 times. Yeah, I yeah. think it's 1.5 times the new level. Uh, this is for skills or for uh, yeah, so oh god, so that costs to go 10 from points two to, to three, get to four. Five. All, right. All right, never mind. So it's, yeah, it's a three, that's so. fine. Okay, okay. So I, I roll a six, I roll with a plus six. So, all right, go ahead. I'm edging that. That's I hate that. Yeah, roll. that's a good, that's a good plan. That's much better. That's a 15. All right. Nine plus six is 50. Yeah, 15. I'm going to be honest with you. That style of tough love that you, you're talking about, not the best leadership ever. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. But. No, hold on. No, no, no. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Ooh, okay. It's not that it's a bad leadership. It's that this crew are just a bunch of knuckleheads. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Okay. And there's there's another aspect to it. You have wisely chosen to ally yourself with Samuel Barrett, who is an excellent second officer. Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. And whenever they're like, oh, uh, whenever they're like, oh, Yusuf is too hard on us and he's never here. Samuel Barrett's like, oh, come sit down with me and I'll tell you the time that Yusuf beheaded a Draconis Combine sergeant in single combat. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I said, well, uh, I think. To, can I? I don't. I don't want to like type up my backstory. You know what I mean. But Go like, ahead. I think yeah. Yusuf is very much under the Napoleonic ideals of what it means to be a noble officer. Is that you do not mix with the regulars. That's bad for morale. Sure. Like he's very That's much tough. that that kind of thing. <clears throat> he wants he he wants his soldiers to fear him more than the enemy bullets. Yeah. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Exactly. Yeah. Oh wow. Especially mercenaries, man. It's like, archaic, but it works. It just well, works. I mean, it's kind of a little bit of a Jasper. It's a little bit of like that, like traditional fighting thing. Yeah, definitely. All of the people who are in the actual military right now watching this are screaming internally. But <laughs> yeah, I, look, I, I'm I, really I, glad I the military is not like the Napoleon times. Yeah. Like, that's a but good that thing. That is a literal <laughs> quote from Napoleon. So yes. like, yeah. complain to him, not me. I mean. He's dead, but <laughs> I mean, I also, love the taking quotes your shit originally in French. The quotes originally mm. in French, so I don't. I, it, it's different, but that is a quote. <laughs> so, Yusuf, not Jasper, you uh, you solve a little problem going down within uh, within your mercenary company. The oh. the the other thing do you, is, do you have one in mind? The, what one the problem that I solved? It it was the morale problem. And loyalty towards you you just solved it you made it oh, okay yes right but what what did the loyalty problem look like like how did that manifest it looked like people who didn't trust you and were literally right and they were calling, calling the, unseen the unseen commander right right, right. it's calling the unseen yes. yeah well that so that gets thwarted i'm sorry okay thank you that helps me in my it's, head it's now they still call you the unseen commander but there's an air of mysticism about it now you know, like a old ship captain in the Age of Sail, like, oh, the captain came out of his cabin today. Sh shit's about to go down. It's real now. <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah, no, I love that. Like, what, once a week, you shuttle over to inspect the troops, and they try to outdo each other in how professional they look. 
they make sure that their simulation scores on that particular day are the highest that they can do and then go back three to lrm slacking. volleys a minute a minute okay that's what <laughs> that's what i asked for out of my troops <laughs> if you can only get three lrm volleys a minute you got some problems it's a fire a reload a fire a reload and a, it's it's a it's a sharps rifles reference them it's a, yeah it's a sharps rifles reference oh that's, my god and you get three shots under it. That's what a good soldier is, is three shots under a minute that time. So like that's all right, Sean B, calm down. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever the equivalent is in the for Battle Max. Yeah. Oh, I love that. It's Barrett too, man. Oh god. Dude. That was that's that good. was a smart, smart like grab right there. Anko Khan. Yes. Your family is bored. <clears throat> uh I think they are they are significant. You, your son is significantly younger than almost everybody else on board. His only playmates are half his age older or half his age younger. Mm. So it's either babies or like cool teenagers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think <clears throat> I think this is like a. This might be a time when Anko sp tries to spend. Uh, more quality time with uh the uh with uh jasper and um would take them up to the command center uh on the jump ship <coughs> with lebeau um and have like lebeau basically talk about the stars and like space so, and... so many times that's going to work in three months <laughs> sure 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 yeah. um but i i also feel like um uh there's there's some level of trying to uh instill <clears throat> this uh this need you're not always going to be uh the uh in in an environment where you're going to be comfortable and trying to like grow in that space um also Lots of fun and games. Trying to make the rooms seem interesting uh, in the uh, the uh, seeker. So like having classrooms, having like interactive uh, displays and like games set up uh, that that draw people in. Uh, there's actually this game that my my family in real life used to play called Jailbreak, um, where you basically it's like hide and seek but with flashlights. So uh, something like that uh in in like either darkness or uh in some level of of safe environment okay your other problem is in the form of first sergeant rachel von lu who is head of the special detail you requested uh okay for the uh, first sergeant is uh There is a deep friction between her special detachment and the regular Lobo forces. Mm. Uh, she quietly intimates to you several times when she is at dinner with you that she would prefer to be doing the job that you pay her for mm. and that her forces despise what Lobo has become as this pencil-pushing death sitting loser moron compared to the <clears throat> glorious warriors they once were and she would like you to take the collar off of the admiral as soon as possible uh yeah i mean i think this is, this is basically the first time you've had face time with this woman yeah and anytime she can sit down with you she's like have you considered my proposal ma'am <laughs> yeah i think there's like elements of it where uh She's trying to uh, 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 defer, uh, not necessarily fully deflect, because her intention is that those things will come, but we were seeking the right opportunities. Um, <clears throat> and, and so, like, in those travels, uh, I think this is kind of one of the things that um, uh, LeBeau and Anko had talked about um when we need supplies or when we need to uh, uh uh when we find something interesting that 
that's that's their purpose is to find those uh find or to make sure that those things happen uh and we succeed in them but what sergeant van lu wants is that this state of being is the new permanent stance of the lebeau acquisitions group Mm. she wants to go back to the good days i I see so she's got contention in, in the sense that like there's not enough action. You've got the sharpest knife in the shed, mm-hmm. and you just keep hanging it up on the wall. Mm-hmm. What are you doing, ma'am? Look at how good we are. I, <clears throat> I, I kind of feel like, uh, <sighs> hmm, I, <sighs> I feel like I, I, I try to, uh, empower them to seek out the glory that they're that they want so uh giving them the the flexibility as long as they do so uh subtly to no uh, hold on hold on let me finish let me finish okay. to, to, to find to find uh optimal targets uh in in our path of what the direction that we're trying to do kind of uh give them the information of like what we're seeking and then have them do their best to find uh, things along the way that we can do that would be interesting. Okay. So essentially try to utilize their skills as like the sharp, sharpest knife mm-hmm. to seek right. out the hey, things that I'm they gonna want. I'm going to read your words back to you. Oh, geez. Just to make sure that you understand what you've told me. Uh-huh. You are empowering the special group to seek out glory pick optimal targets and, and be of use in their personal methodology. Um, yes or no. <laughs> Are you possibly familiar with wrong? the term state-sponsored terrorism? It's not state-sponsored. This it's reminds not... me of Eastern Europe circa 1919. <laughs> this is bad. You're basically just telling them to go out, pick fights in your name, and like fucking. Start I mean, I shit. It. Yeah, <laughs> you're, I, you're literally. I, I, yeah. That's not my intention with the wording. Uh, at, what is your intention? Best, at best, you are licensing privateers. At <clears throat> best. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll be yeah, it's a letter straightforward. Of this is yeah. pretty did, sick. The group that she suggested mm-hmm. come aboard is the Pirate Marines, who've been held in reserve for about a decade now. Mm-hmm. And they, uh, they want the chains to come off. They want to go back to the good old days of piracy, making a quick buck by threatening useless fat traders. So when Anko says that they're empowered to seek out glory via optimal targets... It's not state-sponsored terrorism. It's privateering, literally. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I think I'll tell you I, what. I feel like if you had privateers in the modern day, that's probably what they would be labeled. But you know, <laughs> I, six and one half does it. I mean, maybe I'll, you want to uh, think about this before the next episode. Yeah, I'll think about this more, and I, I, I appreciate the perspectives from everyone else as well. But my intention was uh, to in- empower them to uh, support this venture um, through, yeah. Through, Their through skill set is sudden and immediate violence, direct action through kinetic force. Okay. Intimidation I... through firepower. Got it. Okay. That does that help is, me a little bit. In terms that is their skill set. I thought they were also hunters and seekers, so that's kind of what I was trying to imply. They collide into other dropships and forcibly execute anyone who does not immediately surrender. <laughs> I don't know how to be any more direct than that. No, that's very direct. I appreciate that. Okay. Yeah, I'll think about that. Okay. Lachlan McDougal, unlike the others, you have uh, no problem. You're very busy. You've got a bunch of kids to be taken care of. Even with the tutor, the Duchess uh, monopolizes both your and Badger's time. Uh, She has basically drafted Badger. She sensed that he's the lowest ranking noble. She doesn't accept Marianne because Marianne hasn't sworn to any particular noble. So she treats Marianne as if she's still commoner trash. Um, 
She has basically sensed weakness in Badger and has turned him into her uh, messenger. Good. Good for her. Lachlan <laughs> is so proud. <clears throat> um, uh, continuing the theme of Lachlan being his father, despite spending the first three years of gameplay trashing on him, he's raising an absolute monster of a, <laughs> to be <laughs> the take charge. Um, so I think Lachlan, I I want to, I have some XP to spend. So I want to pick up a skill. Well, first off, hold on. How much to go from int three to int four would be, I think, really expensive. I think it's like 12 right. or 13. I'm cracking up in the book. We keep asking these questions. Yeah, we got to, we got to, this is the problem. Yeah. Is we never do this stuff frequently enough to know the rules. We could do it every week, and I still wouldn't know the rules. I would okay, still enough. consult page 68 in order to figure out what the falling down rules are. Let's see here. I'm sure there's a chapter on spinning XP. I think it's called advancement. Yeah. Yep, yep. yep. It's like page 71 or something. <clears throat> yeah, that sounds about right. Ugh. Character advancement. Here we go. And improving attributes. What you want to take it from where what to what? It would be three to four. Uh is four Two times X. three. It's twelve so XP. 12. Okay. <clears throat> well, I will just. How did taking a skill from zero to one is two then? Because it's times one point five. Yes. Okay. So I will spend two XP to take no history. History of what? Go with. Uh, I want to do military history. Okay. Because I think I think that when Lachlan was just like going through his time where he just like disappeared from the world and was an alcoholic. He was just like flipping through old military history mm -hmm. books and like looking to, he was like looking through like sort of, I think probably he started with like, cause he has no politics and we talked about how he kind of focused on like political philosophy. So I think he like kind of started there and like he's just sort of like looking for like validation of kind of these <clears throat> new ideas that he was like coming around to. Uh, and so he started pivoting into like uh, military philosophy and, and kind of military history and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, and so I think, so I will just, I get it at one and then plus four and a plus three. So I'll end up at four. Um, so I think like, as he's uh teaching the i think basically he's as he's like spending time with the kids because i know the young duchess is probably like asking him for like help with mech stuff right so i think it's like the with sort of the mech education he's also like doing some kind of politics and history type stuff as well uh and just kind of like peppering it in uh and uh <clears throat> yeah i think he's still i know i described that sort of after the time skip he's uh, been much more kind of um uh uh like distant with his his children so i think there's like still some element of that right it's like uh it's easy to say like, distant when you're on a different dropship <laughs> right but it it it's not that he won't even like spend time with them right like how like like i said he's like doing some of the teaching stuff but even then it's like uh sort of from sort of uh like austere position as opposed to like really trying to like uh teach them from their level if that makes sense um, uh one thing i'll I don't note know if you need a roll or anything one huh? thing I'll note, AP, is, is that uh, Anko does have teaching, so I think she'd be helping with like any kind of educational stuff as these kids are around. Yeah. I have knowledge she's teaching. Good. That's okay. Okay. 
I don't think we need to roll for that. You just say it happens. Uh, and then if there's nothing else, I think Lachlan will maybe like spend the three months sort of trying to like subtly bring Badger more around to his way of thinking on things. He'll just like be like, not even not even necessarily like agreeing with his politics, but more just like wanting to work with Lachlan. Now, that makes sense. let me ask you a question. How open are you to having Lachlan be counter-changed by him influencing you? Mm. I'm talking some burning wheel level shit. Yeah. I am 1,000% willing to put what I believe on the line to roll to convince roll. you. If, that will, if it will make it... It makes the, the conversations more effective and therefore we both have a higher chance of persuading the other that, that I'm with that. Can I use leadership? Because fundamentally, I, I don't even really care if uh, Badger like agrees with Lachlan's from like a philosophical or like ideal perspective, as long as he's like decided that Lachlan is someone he wants to follow. Does that make sense? Sure. Like basically, like like Lachlan doesn't care if he convinces him with like intellect or charisma, as long as he convinces him. He is trying to convince you with uh modern ethical theories oh like whatever the battletech version of just war is and, and things like that like justification for use of force mm. sure he believes that your willingness to continuously use police officers in violent capacity against your own population he um he continuously refers to uh the well-known philosopher a a admiral uh who's the guy from galactica tom oh i was galactica adama yeah he refers mm. to admiral adama's speech on the separation of uh police and military which is very famous I in see. the battletech future <laughs> Inter intergalactic humanitarian law <clears throat> he, he rolled a 10 so you gotta beat a 15 here uh okay well i have a plus nine so that's... sounds like it'll be pretty easy for you to <laughs> Seems match likely up with him. that i will do that even with an excellent but... role on his part you're just better at debating than he is that's a seven plus nine is modern candoronk so look, he's just slightly beating him by one. I mean, you got exactly what you needed to beat him, right? It's could not enough to make right? him. A, sorry, what? He could use a plot point to bump it up to get a second degree, right? Uh, no, because he would need to get it up to uh, 18. Oh, he, got it. He, 15 would match to win. He needs a 16, which means he needs an 18 in order to. And to, in order to get a whole to, degree to get another degree yes got it okay so look, he does not abandon role. his political beliefs right that's not not on a exact match he does however stop bringing the topic up every single time and is more receptive to future conversations there is that's less curtness for. in his nods towards you when you sit down to speak that was that's that's a that's a win, right? It's, this is just the first three, three months, months of the voyage, right? Yeah, like we we got plenty of time, you know. And, you know, once once we get back in the mix together, and and Badger remembers what it's like to to uh, be in a lance with with the glorious Lachlan McDougal. He'll, uh, he'll what if he's memorable. banking on the other way around, and he's hoping you'll remember what it's like being in a lance with Philip Davies? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I remember correctly, Badger almost died a bunch of fucking times. And how many times did I almost die? So no, he's go. never he's never been close to dying. That's fair. <laughs> uh AP, I just had an idea. I'm I'm kind of thinking with the kids on board, uh Anko would kind of would set up a routine of uh of games and uh, uh periods to learn, uh free time. Uh, and various projects, like always keeping the kids busy. Um, uh, and 
I mean, you're basically <laughs> scheduling 18 hours a day for... If you're doing all the children, there's like six of them on board, so... Yeah. Uh, with some support, but I would say... Uh, with the support of two tutors. <laughs> hey, that's, that's actually not bad um, for, for young kids. It's good classroom size. Yeah, it's good classroom size. Except one of them is yeah. the tutor for the Duchess, and that's it. That's, all, that's who he works for. Sure, sure. <laughs> but he wants the Duchess to have a good, good social experience, I'm sure. Uh, okay. Or they, they. The um, Duchess definitely outranks all of the other kids' <laughs> presence. <laughs> uh, and is older than all of them, so. That's true. Uh, curiously, is there, like, simulators or, or things like, I'm thinking, like, Ender's there are, Game? There are both mech and aerospace simulators, but I want to be very clear here. The... <laughs> Have you seen the battle mech simulator pods that are in like Texas? Like the, the some of them are still yeah. working actually. Yeah. So I you know that Gen the Con graphics are basically like Mech Warrior Two late nineties yeah, yeah, level. Yeah. All right, that's the kind of simulation level experience you get in a simulator aboard a dropship. Right. Okay. It is. It is vaguely close <laughs> it, it, it to a real experience. You know the mercenaries are doing are simulated constantly because that's their job probably lebeau's pilots simulate airspace engagements occasionally but since they actually get out and fly their fighters every two days you know they have a rotating schedule between the 12 of them yeah i feel like they don't really need a, any simulation they know what it's like to fly a long boring fight plan around the two jump ships for <laughs> three hours at a time well, my thinking there was that I was I, I kind of want to uh, as like a way of entertaining the kids as well as to keep them engaged with something is give them some sort of like interesting new tech they can play with uh, that's safe as well as uh, a simulator is I mean we're basically these kids are not old. I'm but... Ender's gaming them. That's what I'm doing. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> In some respects, yeah, that's what's happening. I know, I know. Uh, not quite, not quite that. But I'm not gonna, quite. Yeah, that. I'm gonna X card. Okay, fair enough. Get teaching like seven and nine year olds combat vehicle, <laughs> like actual combat vehicle use. <laughs> they can't uh, even sit in the seat well, correctly. Well, I was thinking more of like tactical. It's not even like teaching your kids to stuff. drive. It's yeah. teaching your kids to murder other people with hundred ton war machines. Uh, nah, yeah. Let's fair no. Enough. Fair enough. I, I was thinking more of like the the other kinds of games like tactical ones and like chasers and strategy but okay no the, the simulators don't really do that stuff but like yeah. you could teach them how to play go which is like technically yeah, like, the same yeah, thing can, that's fair chess, i mean which is kind of was, the, what its point is <laughs> yeah i mean so, yeah, the, there's definitely <clears throat> a time for communal activities between the kids that will involve like board games and such. And then each of them has their own speed of learning and grade level, except for the twins who of course are almost exactly the same in every way. <laughs> but, They're playing uh, Gloomhaven. <laughs> I feel like probably <laughs> managing the kids is definitely a more than full-time job with the number yeah. of kids and the fact that, you know, the responsibility has basically been shoved up on the people who want to do it. I've heard kids are easy. Same. <laughs> stop trolling. Both of you. Stop. Really as someone who has taught easy, kids, actually. as someone who's taught kids, no. I was, I was a kid one time and I don't think it's that hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'd, uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Just to be clear, young Mark Davies is constantly winding up in a situation where his butt is pointed towards the ceiling somehow. Yeah. I mean, it's zero gravity, so of course it's going to happen sometime, but somehow he's <clears> always <throat> lying on the wall with his butt pointed towards the ceiling. That's just how this kid is. He's ADHD AF. All right. You begin preparations for the last jump before your first target system, which has been uh, designated in Comstar's database as the Safai system. Uh, it's not the furthest a jump ship has ever gone, but you're getting pretty close to the red line of this is about as far from human civilization as most people are comfortable going. 
Um, Safai is listed as unexplored and uninhabited. Uh, when you make the jump, there is a slight bit of difference because a Kearney Fuchida jump, when you make it, has an inversely proportional time to complete the jump based on the size of mass of the ship, which means that the scout jump ship, which is much, much smaller than an invader loaded with a seeker and two other drop ships, uh, starts the jump much later and ends the jump much sooner than its companion. So there is a bit of a lag time as the two jump ships get back into communications with each other. Uh, this planet uh, that is in this system uh, is definitely not uninhabited. <laughs> like, that's, that's the thing the scout is reporting back to immediately. You know, you just hear two midshipmen communicating, you know, like oxygen band. We've got water, carbon, nitrogen, and they're just like listing things off. The captains have a whole second communication channel where all the captains are talking to each other. Um, LeBeau is ordering all of the aerospace fighters out of the base, like not just the ready five, but like all pilots to to the ships immediately. Like we don't know what we're dealing with. Get everybody out there. All the drop ships are preparing to detach from the jump ships for defensive formation. Things basically Dang. go absolutely fucking nuts instantly. Where are each of you during the jump? Wherever I'm needed, AP. Wherever yeah, where? I'm needed. <laughs> no one wants you anywhere during a jump. I want to be clear here that the professionals who make these jumps don't want a random person who isn't used to floating around in space to be vomiting wildly next to them <laughs> during a jump or pushing well, any buttons that might cause spontaneous combustion. Well, then Easy. I will be in my quarters, <laughs> minding my own business. All right, your quarters has a blinking red light that for, like, emergency situation. You are requ requested and required on the bridge as soon as possible. Beep. Well, then I will be Beep. on the bridge as soon as possible. Anko, what about you? Where are you at? Um, I would probably be observing uh, from the command deck with the bow. All right. <laughs> like, basically, as soon as you finish the jump, LeBeau turns and like is getting communications and ignores you completely. Like, it's sure. clear that he's very busy. You hear him giving orders in French that seem to be very dramatic, and he makes a sweeping motion with his arm as well. Yeah, I think Anko like immediately reads the room and just uh, um, see where would she be most useful. Probably making sure either the hmm, the kids are probably locked down, so that's fine. Uh, I think she just make herself available uh, if, like, she needs to get into a mech or, or, um, yeah. Um, All right. So you're definitely going to want to be aboard the Confederate then, because they're going to detach the drop ships, which means you need to make your way quickly through the jump ship, like, to get on your your orb. Okay. You need sure. to ponder your orb from inside the orb. Sure. Yeah. Yusuf. Uh, I was thinking about being in my ready room, um, reading Marcus Aurelius's meditations, oh but I think God. I might be with Barrett doing something. <laughs> so are you Classic. on the, are you on Sir Tyr Sauron ship then? Yeah, probably. Right. I'm probably doing some kind of inspection with, with Barrett. Yeah. <laughs> You've got, uh, a data pad with reflections behind you, behind your back, tucked in mm -hmm. your dummy thick back pocket. All right. Um, pr you, your ship arrives before the other ship does, right? By the time that they've fully arrived, the, your dropship has already detached from the Seeker, and mm -hmm. Captain Dawson is is like taking control of the situation. He's like, "Detach all dropships immediately! Begin <laughs> combat operations and set a picket line. I want every mech warrior loaded in their mechs and ready to defend from any external threats. Vacuumize the bay and prepare to open the loading doors. I want it done five minutes ago, people." 
So Barrett is moving for his scimitar, which is basically worthless in a space fight, given that it's a hover tank and there's nothing to hover on. I mean, I'm not going to stop him. I feel like that's he's posting, right? <laughs> yeah. Your mech is not um, on this dropship. <laughs> yeah, how do I get off of this dropship? You need to is... requisition a shuttle and head to the other ship. Alternatively, is there any of my um, your whole force is here? You could borrow one of your mercenaries. I'm, I'm commandeering a mercenaries mech. Very right? well. Who would you like to supplant? Um, they will remember Boomer. This. Oh no, not Boomer! <laughs> All right, I'm taking the Enforcer. For yeah, now. you grab the Enforcer <laughs> out from Boomer, who basically think... just he you know, like this is the first excitement he's had the whole time. Yeah. The other pilots push past him, right? He, they they basically push him out of the bay into the ready room, and somebody just calls him bench jockey, and it devastates him as the door locks behind him or in front of him and seals so that they can begin, you know, vacuuming the mech bay so that they can open the outer doors and let the mechs go out onto the hull. <sighs> Boomer, yeah. like, slams his hands up against us. He watches you get in his mech. He's like, no! <laughs> Would have been mine. <laughs> it should have been me. Oh, Several man. minutes later, you are all invited to a call. Suspiciously absent is the Duchess, who I suppose the captains agree is not old enough to be making decisions in regards to this particular mission. Um, <laughs> it should be noted, they are here to give information to Lachlan McDougal and receive his orders. The rest of you are included in this call for information purposes only. Um, yeah. LeBeau well, yeah, reports... Not everyone can be... Uh... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> You got this expedition together. This, this is your East India Trading Company fleet. LeBeau reports sure, that's why. <laughs> that uh, after several minutes of analysis, they're ready to deliver you preliminary information. Uh, they are receiving occasional distorted electromagnetic signals from the planet that indicate uh, radio transmission, but nothing more complicated than actual radio. Uh, it appears that there are multiple cities um, and a large amount of native life forms that they are collectively terminologying as the Gray Blight. Uh, so about 20% of the planet's surface is uh, land instead of water, and about half of that is covered by a sheet of various types of gray funguses. Again, this is just shotgun science, but a midshipman just theorizes that all these funguses work together as a life cycle to break down material, process it into nutrients for another fungus to eat, and then when as that fungus dies, a different fungus will kill it, process it, and the life cycle of this planet is basically the funguses rotating amongst each other, uh, soil nutrients as they each collectively feed upon each other in a giant, slightly moving, like, planetary quivering level of mass. It's actually pretty disgusting, like, the initial... You don't have satellites, right? You're basically aiming a telescope at the planet and taking pictures. It's fucking weird. And it's super low res, too. So it's like, it's like 240p. God. <laughs> uh, I'm just so imagining I guess, like a life, a planetary life form, essentially. And this is like where the signal is sending us. Yes, this is the first stop from the signal. There is some piece of astronavigational data that you'll need to find in this system that will be one third of the puzzle to finding the ghost ship that you're looking for. The the S. LDF signal your wife All right, is well for. then uh I guess we gotta spread out and search for clues does any member of your party have a communication skill of some kind I would, uh, I I would have... give you a bonus if that skill was radio based I have tracking no <clears throat> um... I, I'm almost positive I bought tracking for like 
I mean, there's an actual skill Something called communications. Oh, well, I no, don't know. That. It's an intelligence skill. No, I don't have that. I have, uh, I have investigation. I, have... I would also take a sci. I would also take the science skill here if you wanted to know more about the gray blight. <laughs> None of us have been really focused on that stuff for mm -hmm. sure. I understand. I have Will it eat our max? <laughs> Will it no. eat our max? Yeah. I have tech mech. Will that help? No. I can take communication. I have a lot of XP. You tell me <clears> if you <throat> want to do that. I will. Or do the science? That. Yeah. <laughs> Communications. Maybe actually science is more appropriate because then we can say that like he got it from like studying with Zenya's with Zenya files stuff, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I like that. Uh it, but like would the would science help me find the signal or is that just for knowing about the fungus? Science will help you resolve the fungus, not the electromagnetic signals coming from the planet. Mm. All right, I want communications then because that's the more relevant. Sure, one. make a roll. All right, well, first I need to decide how much I want to spend on this. So two would get to one. So then one to two would be three. So it'd be five to get to two. All right, we'll spend five. Uh, curiously, actually, Sam, if, if, you, if you're down for it, I'm willing to take communications too. And if you want to take the science, that way we have complementary skills. Because I feel like we're going to have this come up okay. a couple of times. I can have science too, and then you can take communications too. That's fine with me. Okay, I'll do that. Rolling. Are we both rolling? You tell me if you want to roll and on what. I will roll the science and he will roll the communication. Yeah, I'm cool. Roll comps. Good luck. Eight plus five. Thirteen. Okay. Hold on, I'm trying to get back into the game because I've been only going in for rolls because it doesn't <laughs> doesn't like uh... uh nine and a half minutes after you arrive in system you uh get a message and uh using your skills in communication you begin to resolve it on co <clears throat> Seriously, like, uh, like, are they reaching out specifically because they saw something in space? Like, uh, are, like, d does the the band, does the comm seem to be coming directly towards us? I mean, that's not how radio waves travel. Well, that's true, but uh, I guess they're. Hmm, I'm trying to. I guess I'm trying to determine whether or not like this is them calling to us or someone else because I don't want to just like, inadvertently. Uh, reply. Yeah, it doesn't seem like that's going to be able to be something you're going to be able to figure out before you reply. Uh, I got a 13 total for the science, by the way. Be... Okay. Okay. I will get to that after we do some communications. You can simply choose to do nothing, Hanko. Not reply. Um, you don't know if this is directed towards you, as you say. That's true. Would I be able to, like, uh, uh, insight that or no, you've already made your role this is what you get okay okay um who is this who do i speak to about four minutes later Oh, sorry, it would be closer to about nine and a half minutes later. I am speaker for Second Protector Jameson. Who is this? Now, each one of these signals, you have to, like, clean up. You got to do some, some right. transforms. You got to, you know, take some bands out, do some passes. They seem to be getting clearer the longer the communication goes on, like with each signal sent, they seem to be locking down where exactly you are. Hmm. So they're kind of like narrowing their band to, uh, to you. be more direct. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and is, 
they're triangulating it from from our signals i'm guessing that's not how triangulation works but <sighs> sure they're sorry they're narrowing it based upon where they yes. think we're coming from you can't triangulate with one point. <laughs> no no i know um uh using the wrong words but uh you got the point uh i too am seeking looking for information you can call me anko i am hotway you are the first traveler to this planet in over a decade that has answered our calls. If you have any marauders aboard, we could use your help. Marauders? Like, is that just uh, the mech? Or yeah, I want to yeah. I want to cut over to Lachlan. Lachlan. You're resolving some of the scientific data that all of the dropships like are individually picking up and are being collated by, you know, whoever the lowest ranking person is. It's their job to sort through all the crappy analysis and then forward it to, you know, to somebody. And you're like, oh, I'm a noble. I know how to do everything. Of course I'm good at this. But actually, you're surprisingly good at this. You're like, Wait a second, I saw Xenia do this once. <laughs> <laughs> you are starting to resolve along the same band that you were receiving radio transmissions. You're now occasionally getting an image transmission. They're not being sent to you, to be clear. They're being sent between two separate cities, and they look like they are emergency calls for help. And what you're seeing is... Something that looks like half of an agromech, the other half of it is just made of machine guns, uh, firing at dozens and dozens of dog-sized fungus molds moving towards the city. Whoa. You're getting several of these images coming from different city locations. And you're noticing that there is definitely a hostile to human intent coming from these funguses. That they are attempting to overwhelm the walls of the city and push their way past these machines. And painted on the side of each of them is the word marauder. And beneath it is a name, like a family name. Hmm. So, so just to answer is, your question, uh... Eric, <laughs> yes, they, ha you know how yeah. back in the day, parents would be like, oh, you're using your Nintendo. These, these people over a few centuries have equated the word Marauder to mean battle mech, essentially. So they're yeah. like, oh, you got any Marauders around, bro? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Lachlan does the classic science officer thing where he's like, uh, I think you all need to take a look at this <laughs> <laughs> and like sends the data over. It's like, it appears this fungus isn't, uh, well, quite what we had imagined. Okay. I'll say <laughs> looking it's like a wave blight, uh, was an apt word. It appears these folks are going to need some help. What do you think? Can we get the signal we need without uh, getting involved here? I mean, uh, LeBeau is just floating around, just like, maybe you can negotiate with them? The fungus? No, the people. <laughs> if there is a signal here, they either are sending it or have recorded it, yes? I mean, how, <laughs> my count, how intelligent do you think this fungus is? He says that chuckling, but as he does, the camera goes into the still 240p image that we saw, 
and it Enhanced. resolves to like ultra 4k 60 fps <laughs> but then at 144 hertz uh, of like the fungus pods getting close enough to the agarmex and bursting out as like fungus dogs and starting to claw and pull armor pieces off of it and we start our starship troopers arc because that's what we're about to do <laughs> right outpost oh, 419 oh, is oh, what oh, it is oh, right oh wow <laughs> jesus <laughs> It's a it's a ugly planet, a fungus planet. Starship Troopers. <laughs> What's the name uh, of this planet um, again? Uh, Safi. 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 Well, you know, AP. Fungus planet. AP. Normally, <laughs> gotta cultivate might, fungus uh, power. I might avoid this kind of planet, but you know, I like I like to play, and I, I'm a fun guy. So. <laughs> oh my <laughs> wow. god! That's so painful. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, maybe this will have, this joke will come up no, later. No, no, but no, right no, off, no. right off the bat. <laughs> Any closing thoughts for today's episode? Oh, well, I'm I glad I'm mine. I, I'm glad I brought some some of the military forces in the. I don't know. I think we got uh, something. Yeah, I feel like air air force power is definitely going to be a significant factor in the upcoming war against the fungus. <laughs> uh, at least localized, you know, the fungus does take up half of the land mass of the planet, so you can't bomb. Does it burn? <laughs> does it yeah, burn? Yeah. I don't know. You'll have to find <laughs> out. I love the smell of napalm in the morning, AT. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, how much napalm do you think you brought along board? You think that the quartermaster for your fleet was just one. like, we needed hey, to bring a ton of napalm. 1,600 yeah, tons. 1,600 tons of napalm. <laughs> it was all napalm. That's all we brought. <laughs> that does not sound correct. Uh, Eric no. Jasper Vulgaris got any oh, closing man. thoughts for today. Six feet underground. Good Vulgaris. to be back in the cockpit, man. Yeah. You know, having a beer. Okay. We're good for next week? Should be, yeah. yeah. Alright, the Green week lakes. after that, I think we are out because of me, but uh, we'll see how July goes after that. Could be rough. I'm just glad we're back for at least a bit of time. Anyway, thank you all for joining us. We gotta get out of here. Have a good time, Zone. I'll miss you all. <laughs> <laughs>